Praise the Lord, everyone. Brother Roop here from Cochise. No. <laughs> Slovakia. Koseke. Koseke, Slovakia. Slovakia. I'll probably get right the last day we're here. Probably. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> if you're a subscriber, thank you very much. God bless you. Go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell. Our today's devotional is called... Sin and the Holy God. Sin and the Holy God. Ooh. So reading our devotionals, we came upon a five-day series in our devotional. So we're going to cover each one in yeah. a separate video. And they were um, very eye-opening. And what I'll do is at the end, I'll end the comments, I'll submit a picture of each devotional. So if you want to go back and read it. Extra bonus. Yes. Use it for reference. It's <laughs> awesome. So we'll get started. Sin and a holy God. Proverbs 8.13 says, To fear the Lord is to hate evil. Yes. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior, and perverse speech. And Jeremy Taylor is quoted as saying, no sin is small. Mm, true, very true. The progression is a very natural one, but it is exceedingly dangerous. We struggle with our sin. We find we can't overcome it. So we accept it as part of who we are. And then we begin to redefine our own nature. We did the best we could after all, so our human nature must not have been that bad to begin with. We end up with then, quote, I'm okay, you're okay perspective. We're all okay. Yeah. <laughs> the aim is to do better, but we're comfortable if we can't. Right. The problem with being comfortable with sin is that it is entirely contrary to the nature of God. God is not comfortable with sin. No, not at all. He never just lets it slide. Sin separates us from God. He paid for it in full and with great sacrifice. Yes. From Genesis 3 through Revelation 20, it was never a light matter. The book of Proverbs has told us that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. How? If we have to fear of God, we've got it rightly understanding how awesome he is. We understood our need to plead for a reconciliation with an offended creator. We saw his goodness and by comparison, everything else looked evil. And since God is the standard by which all things are measured, our own nature didn't just look evil to us, it was evil. Mm. We grew to hate it. Yes. There is a false attitude in many segments of the contemporary church. It is the belief that sin, being universal to human nature, is not all that serious. That belief leads one to a God, a little God, a little G God, who is lenient, as opposed to a capital G God who forgives. Right. The first God is non-existent. Only the latter can save. Yes. Do you hate sin? Is it, it is detestable to you? Then you are in the line you are in line with God's wisdom. You know the difference between a lenient deity and a forgiving one, and you know which one to bow to. Yes, we should. Sin separates us from God. Uh, if we have sin in our life, we, we can't please God. That's why we, when we come to, come to our faith, we, we repent of our sins. Yes. And, yes. and God's grace carries the rest of the way. Uh, God, God's grace, because we're not, we're not perfect and we'll never be perfect. No, in fact, a friend of mine said something last year that I've never forgotten. We are a sin factory. We are. 
<laughs> it is. It's That's just good. who we are, you know. Yeah. Our hearts are desperately wicked. They are. And only through the love of God can we be redeemed. Yes. And only through calling on his blood, Jesus' blood, for salvation can we be redeemed and escape death and hell. Yes, because we are sin factories. Uh, that's where God's grace comes into play. Um, God gives us the grace to continue in our faith, even though we have um, issues. Yes, uh, we all have issues. <laughs> we, we all do. <laughs> and I know we're laughing and smiling, but sin is nothing to be funny about. It, it's not. It's not. You know. So. Well, we thank you, and we hope y'all will continue with the uh, series on sin. God bless you. Have a blessed day. God bless you.